Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Viraj Alai. I'm working in EHS office, environment, health, and safety. And um, I cover all ergonomics evaluation in the campus and also um, other programs within uh, industrial hygiene section of office. And uh, as you know, after COVID, uh, this topic would be the the most uh, relevant to topic to everybody because they are working from home. They're gonna know what approach they should have in terms of ergonomics. How can they protect themselves um, against ergonomics, uh, ergonomic injuries? And um, that's why we we try um, too much during the past year to have uh, the program Im improved and also have some training available for people and a lot of materials, um, reading materials in um, EHS website for people to reach and help them understand the issues and how they can actually protect themselves. Um, today, I am so happy to have this um, presentation for a lot of people. Um, they're working from home, they have questions, we know that. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go through every single scenario of um, ergonomics uh, working from home. And we can just um, say something about it and I'll be happy to answer any question at the end of the meeting. And um, let's start. So we may have uh, a lot of definitions for ergonomics, but usually, in one word, in one sentence, uh, ergonomics is the matching the work to the person. It means we may have a different body shape or different uh, type of personality, but in, in terms of ergonomics and ergonomic design, um, we, should, we should have that uh, workstation based on what we are. Um, you can look at the different setups, different um, size of stuff based on the anthropometric of people. Um, and this is true for everything around us, including our office. In office, we have chair, we have desk, we have monitor on top of the desk, and many other things that uh, we should make sure that those um, tools and those furniture are um, fit us perfectly. If it's not, so we may have problem during the time. So in ergonomics, we usually talk a lot about the work-related musculoskeletal disorders. These kind of uh, injuries happen over time. It's, it's not something happening overnight. It's, it's, um, it's very long time needed to, to have that happening for us. Um, imagine you're working in bad situation, bad posture, sitting on the bad chair, in a bad, in, in improper desk. And after months or years, you may have some pain in your shoulder, your back, in your neck, and all of these kind of things uh, in different parts of the body. This is the musculoskeletal disorder at MSDs. Um, based on different numbers that we get from different um, uh, institutes, 30% uh, of workplace injuries involve the back. So back is very important for us. And also, if you look at further on uh, ergonomic rules, we can see that uh, um, having a good um, sitting posture is very, very important. And we have to follow those rules carefully. In this picture, um, you can see if if we handle the weight and 10 pounds of weight correctly with the upright posture, we put 10 pounds on our back, on our spine. And if we bending for that, so 100 pounds or maybe more if you have a twisting position and um, that, that's a lot, of, a lot of weight on your back. And especially if you look at it carefully, this is happening just a very small part of your spine. I'll show you the next um, slide and show that um, L4, L5, which is a very important uh, part of your spine. 
And that's why we just very focus on handling the material carefully, ergonomically. So in this picture, you can see um, this is uh, this herniation or bulging that happening if people don't care about the handling of weights or loads. Um, they're twisting, they're bending for handling stuff. And after a while, they, they may get this MSD, spinal disc damage. And uh, this bulging disc here actually push the nerves and they have um, a lot of pain. I had this before I did the surgery and um, that's maybe the best thing I did during my life because the all pain goes away. Um, and also in this picture, that's very important picture to understand. When we are standing, um, we have naturally 100% of, of the uh, weight or weight distributed um, in our body. If we're sitting, that's gonna be 140%. And if you're just sitting and bending at the same time, 190%. It means you put too much pressure on yourself if you're sitting in bad posture. You can see if you're lying down, 24% of weight on your back. So this picture um, teaches a lot because if we talk about the chair, we talk about a good chair and good sitting and healthy sitting on the chair, which is very important. We talk about it later. So, before we go to other part of ergonomics, we have to explain the, the um, neutral postures in our body. Look at all of these pictures. They are comparison between neutral posture, awkward postures. And if you look at this picture, you can easily understand that if we work on our workstation, we have to follow those rules. Those are really easy rules to follow. Um, have this angle when we're working on our desk. Don't reaching like this. These are awkward postures. And also if you're working with mouse, you have to be straight here. Like uh, uh, don't deviation from the straight um, posture. And also if people sitting on the chair, neutral postures means your back is in upright posture you have back good support for your back, your, your feet on the floor all the time. And also the seat height is proper for your height, for your body size. And another important thing here is the, whatever you handle during the day, you wanna handle something, you wanna handle a chair or anything else, it has to be in your power zone. Anything out of this power zone, which is in the waist area or in your, uh, domain area, that's a power zoom of you. If you move it in that zoom, it's gonna be safe. Other than that, you have the uh, upper shoulder or under, under uh, knees um, handling, which is um, exhausting. Uh, when we talk about the working um, station in your office, in your home, we talk about these angles too much. Uh, if people having this experience with us in, uh, in our ergonomic review, we talking about these angles and ask people to follow those angles, this angle, 90 degrees, 220. And also when you're sitting, these angles for your knees has to be done. So based on these angles, um, the, the position would be neutral. And uh, if you're sitting here and look at your monitor, again, these angles should be um, addressed. Or we ask people to look at the monitor in your eye level, and the top of the monitor should be an eye level. And in that case, people have better um, screening um, the screen and monitor. Um, this picture is very important to understand that uh, we have different size of bodies. And if we sit on the same chair with others, we definitely not fit with that situation. That's why we're, we're talking about the fitting the furniture with your body size. It means if you're sitting on a chair, it's better to be adjustable. So in that case, you have that adjustability. You can sit on the chair, if you can adjust it, 
um, you can uh, put it in the good, uh, good height for your body size. Look at this picture. This is a 98 um, percentile of male, and this one is five percentile of male, which is too much difference between those two people. But usually all of these desks around us are 29.5 inch. So it means if I'm sitting on this chair, maybe I'm okay, but someone else may not. So we have to adjust it based on our body size. In that case, we can have a better ergonomic um, situation or ergonomic posture. Um, two numbers is very important for design and also if you wanna have a good um, sitting or standing postures where you're working with the computer. Um, elbow height and eye height is very important. Elbow height, because when you're sitting on your chair, we like the elbow height to be around the desk height. Um, if you're standing, that elbow height would be, uh, again, important because you're working on a surface in a standing position and you want that angle, this 90 degrees angle to be available for you. So whatever you're sitting or standing, you have to think about this elbow height, which is very important. If you work with any workstation, sitting, standing, if you're sitting on different chairs or different desk or different um, counter top in your kitchen, you have to think about this um, elbow height carefully and adjust it based on that. So if you're lower than that, bring you up, bring yourself up. If you're above that, so just trying to bring down the desk height and, and be in that a good level. Um, a lot of people are asking, what kind of chair I should buy? Okay, there is no solid answer to that, but if you um, gonna buy a chair or prepare a chair, think about these adjustability. Um, you, you should be able to sit, to adjust the seat, adjust the depth, height, back rest, arm rest, and all of those features help you to be better in the neutral posture. This is all about the neutral posture. So, um, with one on one, with one -on -one um, evaluation we have in, in the campus, we usually talk to people about that. We adjust their chair in the good height and trying to have a good back support and, and ask them to put their feet on the floor. If they don't have that possibility, they should use the, the uh, footrest. Uh, if they use the, the mouse, so again, they have to be in the correct position posture. And the correct posture is to have the straight hand posture when they using the mouse. And any of these incorrect postures may have um, difficulty for you. And then over time, they may have some kind of um, problem with fingers and, and, and hand pain. Um, I'm sure Kate will talk about these um, uh, features on, on the uh, mice or keyboards. And when we talk about the working from home postures, we, we talk about many things that may happen. As I said, maybe unlimited number of uh, situations you may face when you're working from home. Some people don't have enough space in their home to, to be a home office. They're trying to be in the kitchen, in anywhere in the house to just set it up, somehow set it up to work. So you may see different um, pictures of different things around us that people trying to be ergonomically correct or having a better neutral posture. Because if you have a neutral posture during work, you may have a better experience of working over time. If you're working four hours, five hours in a good neutral posture, you don't have any pain uh, after the working day. So we're trying to address all of these if we can today. Um, if you're sitting on the couch and, and working with computer, you, you may have different postures. I can't say how because I haven't seen people um, exactly how they do that. But you have to be careful about the, your back. Your back should be supported and upright. 
and also and not bending or twisting when you're sitting on this um, couch or working with your laptop. It, it, it completely depends on your situation. That's why recently, um, or maybe starting from last year, we, we asked people to, um, to do evaluation with us via Zoom. And in those, that Zoom meeting, we're trying to talk to people, see their workstation and, and help them make it better. So another example of people sitting on the chair with a bath posture, this guy actually just uh, bending toward um, his laptop. And, and I, can't, I can't say how much time he can spend in this position, but definitely that's exhausting position and the, uh, the pain should be coming. And the left side, this lady sitting on the chair with the stand for um, her laptop, uh, I can't say that's a good height, but it's definitely the comfortable height for her. And also, she's just typing as she's doing in office and in, 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 her, in her, her chair. Um, some people sitting on chair and doing the laptop work. So definitely, uh, if the position is not right, they may have some um, pressure on back or on neck or shoulders, or maybe um, pain coming to the arms, upper arms. And those are actually um, happening because you don't have the good chair to sit. You don't have the good enough um, support for your back or you, your chair height is not good or you put your um, laptop on your lap, um, which is not completely correct. You have to bring it up some, somehow to work with. So based on those things, the solution usually diff, uh, is to use separate keyboard and separate mouse. That's, that's something that we can, maybe 95% of time be asking people to do it because Using the laptop is exhausting. So, and, and the, the, the working with that situations are uh, also uh, problematic. So it's better to have the laptop. It's better to have the stand for laptop adjusted that way and use a separate keyboard and mouse to have that um, workstation uh, much, much better. Um, People asking how much distance we need from laptop to us. One arm length, that would be the, the very ballpark and people using it correctly. But some people asking uh, how, how many inches I need. So I can't say that, so, but one arm would be the best. Um, and also if you can't see it, you may just bring it to yourself. So this adjustment is just personal adjustment and uh, there is no exact number for that. Um, again, we ask for having the separate laptop monitor if you can. That would be very good. Some people can do it, have their laptop on, on the desk and also connect it to the, to the regular monitor in front of them. And I, it can be very, very helpful for people that work in a lot of time um, on that workstation. And uh, it, it's not needed to say, you need to stretch regularly. You need to stand up going somewhere and, and walking around and change your position. I explain it a little bit more later. Um, separate keyboard, as I said, separate mouse is very important. If you can follow that rule, that would be perfect and uh, can diminish a lot of pains. Uh, if you can do that. Um, and also if people putting the uh, keyboard or mice on the desk, so they have to be careful to uh, put it in the good location that they have the good angle of typing uh, or, or with their um, actually um, elbow so they can type um, effectively and uh, without any pain or problem. Um, if you talk about the chair height, the middle one would be the best because 
if you have lower than that or upper than that, you have problem with your legs, put it on the floor, or maybe you just put it here. Um, so, which is not a good idea. We always ask people to put their feet on the floor and just secure it that way with the all um, part of body supported that way. Um, the back support, some people asking for lower or upper support. We ask for middle support, middle of the back. That would be the best location to adjust your back support. Um, we pay attention very much to this angle of your arms where you're typing. So that would be the right angle that's the best. But if you don't, if you have this kind of angle, that would be problematic over time. Um, some people reaching around the different side of uh, body, we don't recommend that at all. We ask them to have their arm near their body as much as you can, just attach it and then type that way. So in that case, you never had that kind of pain um, later. Um, in ergonomic evaluation, we talk about the contact stress and ask people to avoid them, uh, like having this kind of stress, uh, contact stress on edge of the desk or here, an elbow, or anywhere here, um, the back, knees. Um, so we trying to actually um, re re reduce those kind of um, problems. Um, in this picture, you can see the difference between um, two different setups that people sitting here with bad posture, um, bending toward the computer, and also they have contact stress here. Um, the neck definitely is not aligned with the back. It's a little bit bend bended. So in that case, um, it's not ergonomic. Uh, correct, but here she is trying to adjust it somehow and 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 do it right. So bring the chair height a little bit higher, using the the cushions or anything to bring it up, and then using the um, footrest here. So in that case, you can see the 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 neutral posture is, is more um, more um, visual here and uh, it may have a better ergonomic situations. Um, if we talk about the chairs, we talk about the range of um, different things that you can use uh, from fully adjustable chairs to this lounge sitting, which is not comfortable for working, but you may be in between or you may have your, your office chair in home. So that, that's perfect if you have that. So because you have that much of adjustability um, that you can adjust it with any um, desk height or surface height that you're working on. If you have something like this, not adjustable with backrest, so you may have less problem. You can have some cushions or blankets or something, and then you can have a good height based on that. Um, other other stuff um, people more or less using. Uh, some people asking about these ball chairs. Ergonomically, I don't recommend this um, because of um, variety of situation you can have uh, if you're sitting on this. is not is not very um, solid uh, posture that you can have with this um, furniture. Um, optimizing the adjustable non adjustable chair. You can use any of these tools. They are available in Amazon too much. Um, back support, these pillows. Um, if you don't have any, you can just roll up the um, towels and use it, put it on the back and support the back. Um, uh, remember, you have to support your back all the time. Back support is very, very important. And also if you're, um, you're in the higher, um, seat sitting on higher seat and your uh, your legs on the air so you should have any of these um, small box or any footrest or something to just have that um, feet on the floor or on the on the on this furniture um, for different people we may have different 
options. Uh, people are standing, we use this mat, they, they're really uh, soft and people can stand for a long time uh, without fatigue. Um, but if you don't have the, these um, um, so availability to just put your feet on the floor, you can use the foot rest. This is kind of uh, 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 stool type for short people so they can use it uh, effectively. Another example of wrist pad, if uh, people using wrist pads, sometimes they put their wrist here exactly on top of these um, wrist support. So this is a kind of a contact stress and we put pressure on nerves here, a lot of nerves coming from this region and uh, they may have numbness on fingers uh, over time. We asked to have the palm area on that instead of wrist area on these um, wrist supports. Um, another tool that people can use, it's, it's kind of be, be using a lot of these uh, as a document holder, or you can just um, put it there and put your laptop on top. So you can use it a lot at different pos uh, positions and uh, have a better neutral postures if you have this kind of um, furniture. Um, probably uh, um, Kate will talk about this, but uh, this is one of the ergonomic um, mouse that we um, usually recommend people. This is adjustable. Uh, you can adjust the um, thumb area or angle of uh, what you have with different type of, uh, different size of hand, you can use these things. Uh, I think Kate will more talk about this, but this is the, uh, another type of uh, keyboard uh, roller mouse on it. And uh, people, instead of using mouse uh, separately, they can use this roller uh, here and um, have a good straight hands where they mousing. Um, we talk, all the time we talk about the reaching and ask people to reduce that uh, kind of working. So, we don't want people to reaching around the desk and reach to um, mouse or any other things um, over the desk. Um, the, 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 the main thing is to, you have to put everything essential and primary work soon, and then others in the secondary. We don't want people to reach out um, in different um, positions. Um, again, using the good good mouse would be very effective uh, if you have this kind of postures instead of having these postures, which is awkward and uh, um, exhausting over time. Um, we have a rule for um, for rest or for um, breaks. So usually we ask for 20, 20, 20 rules. It means after 20 minutes work, focus on some objects 20 feet away for 20 seconds. That's easy to learn how we can do that. And um, usually if you follow this, uh, um, you have this kind of breaks all the time during your work and definitely you have a better feeling of um, um, comfortability. And uh, remember to blink because if you look at your monitor for a long time, you may have some difficulty um, because of that, um, remember to blink many times. And uh, in this uh, chart, you can see for every 30 minutes of work, um, if you're sitting, 20 minutes for sitting, eight minutes for standing, and two minutes for um, just moving around and have a break. So these 30 minutes are very important to follow because as we know in ergonomics, the best posture would be sitting and standing interchangeably. Um, and if you have that possibility, that would be the best working or dynamic working situations. Uh, sit for some times and then stand for, a, for some times and then have a break. And for 7.5 hours a day, you may have five hours sitting, two hours standing and half an hour for moving and having the uh, breaks. Um, on top of that, um, in, in EHS website, we have a lot of information for working remotely. 
and people can reach through that. And um, we have a lot of materials um, there uh, coming from different sources. And uh, also you can um, have this new um, working from home uh, course in Learning Center. You can take that course and you can have the assessment at the end of the course that help you understand your situation, having some questions and that questions answered by you. And then you have the uh, assessment report that you can follow those uh, recommendations. Uh, I encourage every one of you to follow uh, and, and go to that training course. And also on top of that, if you need us to be with you and do the, the assessment, we'll be happy to do that. Or team can um, adjust the time with you and set up a time with you come, um, uh, doing the Zoom meeting with you. If you're working from home, we can see the location, we can see the seat or, or desk and give you um, a guidance on how you can actually go forward with that. Um, gonna stop um, from here and uh, I'll be happy to answer all questions um, uh, after the meeting and I gonna introduce Kate that will help us with the next section. Thank you, Araj. Hi, everybody. I'm gonna share my screen with you. So my name is Kate and I am an assistive technology specialist with disability and access services. And I'm gonna be showing you a brief overview of some ergonomic keyboards and pointing devices today. Um, ordinarily in the non pandemic times, we would be inviting you to make an appointment with our office to come in and actually see these devices in person. Um, unfortunately, we can't do that right now, but that is a service that we are planning to resume when it's safe to do so. So keep in mind that there is no one best device or one device fits all solution. Um, as Araj mentioned, your personal preferences and the makeup of your own body are going to be really important in determining what devices are best for you. I'm going to be putting our contact up at the end of the presentation and also a URL to our website where you can see the devices that I'm showing and also many others. So you um, don't have to feel like you have to remember everything I'm telling you as we go. And we will have time for questions after I have finished. And um, I think somebody asked about, will we be posting the slides? We're gonna make this presentation available on our website and also on our YouTube channel. So you can go back and revisit it. So I'll start with ergonomic mice. There are four types that I'm gonna talk about today. Contoured mice, vertical mice, trackballs, and also ambidextrous pointing devices. So what is a contoured mouse? Um, if you picture a standard computer mouse um, that is not ergonomic, you, it's probably going to be relatively flat, pretty small, and symmetrical. So the contoured mice are divine, uh, designed thoughtfully to fit your hand and support it while you're using the mouse. Um, on the left, we have the Gold Touch mouse. That's the one I actually use personally, so I wanted to include that. Uh, we have the Contour mouse in the middle, and then on the right, the Ortho mouse. So vertical mice are um, the next type I'm going to show. Um, whereas a standard non-ergonomic mouse is going to keep your hand horizontal and parallel to the desk, the vertical mouse will keep it in a vertical position. The mouse on the left, the evoluent vertical mouse, comes in different sizes as well, so you can choose the model that best fits your hand. Um, in the middle, we have the contour mouse, which Araj also talked about. I like this mouse a lot because it's very customizable. Um, the thumb support and the tilt can be customized to fit your hand. And then on the right, we have the love key vertical mouse. The next type of mice is trackballs. Um, the benefit of a device like this is that you can keep your wrist and arm stationary while controlling the cursor with your fingertips or another part of your hand um, to help you maintain that nice neutral posture that Araj was talking about. Uh, there's two different types here. Uh, the one on the left, the Logitech MX Ergo, uh, you control the cursor with your thumb and the other two, the Kensington Orbit and the Kensington Slim Blade, the trackball is in the middle. 
So you could use those mice with either hand if you're feeling symptomatic in your dominant hand, you could move them to the other. Um, and you can also use different parts of your hand, like your fingertips or the heel of your hand to move that trackball to control your cursor. And the last type of mice I'm going to talk about is ambidextrous ones, um, like those center oriented trackballs, you could use these with either hand. So if you're feeling pain or fatigue in your dominant hand, you could always switch to the other and keep working. Um, we have the rock stick uh, ambidextrous mouse on the left here, which can be used in either hand. And then I have two examples of touchpads, um, the Apple Magic touchpad in the middle and an Adesso PC compatible touchpad on the right. And those work very much like a touchpad on a laptop. So you can move them from side to side or um, even place them in front of the keyboard to um, find a position that's more comfortable. And I'm going to move on to keyboards now. So I'll be showing you examples of split keyboards, waved keyboards, and a few other models that I think are worthy of note. The split keyboards um, are so named because they separate the keyboard into two halves. Um, some people experience strain by using a keyboard that's too small. Like for example, a keyboard on a laptop sometimes won't allow for the neutral posture that Iraj was talking about. So you could be scrunching up your shoulders or um, feeling tension in your neck as a result. So the split keyboards give you a little more separation. The Kinesis Freestyle on the left and the Gold Touch in the center are um, customizable. So you can tent them and you can spread them and um, find a position that is most comfortable for you. Whereas the Kinesis Advantage model on the right has the two halves fixed. So um, just a couple different types for you to check out there. And the Wave models similarly spread the keyboard in two halves and they also have the additional support of that contoured or waved design that you can kind of see in these images. Um, we have the Microsoft Sculpt ergonomic desktop on the left and the Microsoft Natural on the right. And these last two keyboards that I'm including here are not strictly speaking ergonomic in design, but I've included them because they do have features that could be helpful depending on where you're feeling strain. Um, the Evoluant Reduced Reach keyboard on the left has the number pad on the left side of the keyboard as opposed to on the right, which is typical. Um, if you mouse with your right hand, that allows you to bring the mouse closer into the keyboard to create a, new, a neutral posture. On the right, we have the Wet Keys Soft Keyboard. Um, this one has a very, very soft touch. It's just made of silicone. And as you can see from the picture, it's, it's flexible. So uh, a user suffering, for example, from something like arthritis or repetitive strain in their hands, find that soft touch really comfortable. And this one is also washable, which is really nice in our current pandemic times. Lastly, I just wanted to mention that both Windows and Mac OS X have built-in speech recognition. So you could use these tools to either dictate text or control your computer by voice um, and spend less time on your keyboard and mouse. And so while we can't invite you into demo devices right now, our team is very happy to answer any questions you might have if you're trying to select an appropriate device or if you just wanna know um, what's available, you can feel free to email us at abic-staff at mit.edu. That's A-T-I-T hyphen S-T-A-F-F. -F. And I've also included here the URL from our website that lists all the ergonomic devices. So you can feel free to check those out and get in touch if you have any questions. So I'll leave that up for a moment. And uh, if anybody has any questions, now is the time to ask. Great. Thank you, Kate and Niraj. Uh, so there's been a steady stream of questions and comments in the chat. And uh, I'll start with um, one of the first ones, which is um, what would be the maximum size for an individual monitor to minimize eye and neck strain? So to answer this question, um, usually whatever you use, you your eye level. So if I have a big monitor, 20 inch or 30 inch, I have to put it further and also 
the top of the monitor should be your eye level. So the eye level um, rule would be the best to explain this. Definitely, I've seen um, different monitors, big monitors that people are using. Depends on how much distance you need it to be, to read it carefully and also effectively. So it has to be your eye level. And also, I saw another question on um, this chat that people asking, if you have a shoulder pain, what would be the reason of that? So I can easily say, if you have a shoulder pain, you have to think about the desk height that you have. Some people, if they work in a different uh, setup with the desk higher than usual, they put their shoulder like this and they're trying to, to type this way. So that would be maybe the, the best uh, explanation of what's happening uh, for shoulders. People have shoulder pain because they keep their shoulder all the time like this because they have to because the chair height and desk height is not accordingly um, adjusted. So that's why I'm asking, if you're using the seat, you're using the chair and you're using the, uh, the desk, you have to adjust these two with each other based on that angle that I explained the first of the, the meeting. So 90 degrees, that would be the magic number here. So if you're sitting on the chair, adjust your desk in the height that you can type in with 90 degrees with your um, elbow and your shoulder relaxed, not just like this or uh, anything uh, near that. So has the shoulder should be relaxed. And in that situation, look at your angles. Look at your elbow angles. It has to be 90 degrees to 110 between those numbers. So in that case, you have a relaxed shoulder, no shoulder pain, no neck pain. Okay, thank you, Arash. Uh, there's a question about how are ThinkPad track points, um, the red dot in the middle of the keyboard used for mousing, how are they for ergonomics? Um, that's a good question. I personally found those ThinkPad eraser head um, uh, track points very difficult to use, and I would always use an external mouse. I think it's probably good to have an alternative in a case like that. Um, the, you know, the that would be the good answer. The upside to yeah, it is so if it's in the center, and that's kind of good. You could use it with either hand. Um, the downside is that. It, it requires a lot of fine motor control to make it work, I would say, compared to using a mouse or a trackpad or something like that. Yeah, I agree with you. So um, different people, they have different approach for um, using mouse. I've seen people in, um, in one of the department, they're using just the keyboard, um, some of the keyboard keys and then just keep it that way and moving around just using like a mouse and they said I can never I can't do this <laughs> but they can that they are happy with that so I'm not against anything but if you um, have difficulty um, using the trackpad or anything like that you can use this uh, separate mouse um, mm -hmm. which is more economically available thanks uh, there's a question about, does MIT have a staff discount for any standing or sitting desks that you could buy through, um, through Atlas? Uh, unfortunately, there is not something like that, but we have the office in um, uh, procurement that they have some deals with uh, some companies for chairs, at least as I know, for chairs. They have some discount on that. And if you connect to those guys um, in procurement office, they can help you find the chair with the discount. That discount for MIT uh, currently. Um, but not, I'm not aware of anything else like that. Okay, thanks. Uh, let's see what else. Um, are any of the pointing devices better for when you need to do a lot of text highlighting 
Uh, in other words, click, hold, and drag using two fingers? That's a great question. Um, if you find that that repetitious movement is causing fatigue or pain in the hand, I would recommend one of the ambidextrous devices so you can switch back and forth between um, your dominant and non-dominant hand. That way you're not doing quite so much of the same task over and over on one side. Great, thank you, Kate. Um, Maz asks if there are any ergonomic mechanical keyboards. You know, we have keyboards with mechanical keys, but there isn't anything I recall that were particularly ergonomic about them. Am I right, Kate? You're right, Kathy. We do have mechanical keyboards that some people just really like that feedback, that, you know, that style of touch of key. Um, and if that's the case, there's definitely mechanical keyboards available, but they do not tend to be ergonomic in design for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, you know, the, the waved keyboards and the split ones, every keyboard has its own like style of touch, if you know what I mean. So if you are particular about that or you have a preference, I would definitely recommend putting your hands on something before buying it or making sure that you can return it if you, if you can't do that right now because of the pandemic. Um, because if you, if you do have a preference on the feedback, you might wanna, um, you might wanna just try it out before you commit. Great, thanks, Kate. Anna says, I was able to try different mice back in the day through Kate's helpful office. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to being back um, and providing that service again, but we're not quite sure when that's gonna happen. So um, I agree with Kate that things that you can get um, delivered that you can also return is probably the best thing to do at this point to, to be able to try them out. And if they don't work out for you, you can send them back and try something else. Um, Oyun Erdin, I hope you're saying, I'm saying your name right, asks, what about display brightness? Is it better to have display brightness to be higher or lower? So in, in industrial hygiene, part of this question is uh, we usually um, don't like the glare on the monitor and um, ask for bring it down as much as you can to just be comfortable with what you actually seeing on the, on the page. So brightness is something personal, maybe different from all of us. Mm -hmm. So just no glare, glare is not, nothing good. Yeah. I do remember too, Iraj, that um, one thing we would often tell people is make sure that um, your monitor is not facing a window because um, there is a lot of light coming through the window that can cause glare while you're yes. trying to look at your monitor at the same time. That yes. um, could cause a lot of eye strain that you don't really need. Yes, usually you should try to be um, back to the light or something like that, not just um, right. in front of you or the, on the side. So that kind of reflections would be um, uncomfortable. Okay. okay, great. Okay, um, any other questions from our audience before we, we wrap up? Um, we are recording this, we will make the, um, the recording available, we'll send you an email with the link and um, with the slides as well, so you can review those. Um, but I hope this has been really helpful for everybody. And um, we wish you um, working from home health because um, we know that it is not um, an ideal situation. The setup that many of us have at work is not replicable at home. and. Um, it can cause a lot of pain for people. So thank you, Iraj and Kate, for um, sort of helping us um, figure out ways to make it more comfortable. You're welcome. Great. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Um, and um, please stay healthy. And someday we will see you again soon on campus. <laughs> Thanks. Take care.